Yo friends, what's up? A long-standing critique of Svelte was its composability. So for example, you know how in React you can just create a function and that is a component so you don't have to create another file and etc. And today we're actually going to learn how snippets solve this problem. Not only do they replace slots, but they also let you create reusable markup. Alright, so first we're going to go through a couple of examples, then we're going to refactor an example together from the Svelte tutorial. And then I'm going to even show you how to programmatically create snippets. So this is really awesome if you want to integrate Svelte with an existing library or framework. And then in the last section, I'm going to show you how to type snippets. All right, but before we get started, here's a message from our sponsor. I'd like to thank this video sponsor, you, the viewer. You can support the channel through Patreon or a YouTube channel membership. Members get early access to videos, help shape the content and a special Discord role. You can find all of the links in the description. Thank you for your support. All right, so let's look at this card example. So this is just a simple card, nothing special. We can already see how simple it is in HTML to nest elements. So here we have this card, header, footer, and whatever else you want, right? But how can we actually turn this into a component? And let me actually first copy everything. Here I have this component that I created. I named it card.svelt. Let me just copy paste everything inside of here. I'm just going to carve out the content inside of here. And this is now a question. We just want to pass these children, right? So how can we do this? Well, we can use this using regular props in Svelte 5. So here we can create this script tag. And now we can destructure these props from dollar sign props rune. So this can be anything you want. By default, you get children. And now we can see how we can use this. So to render the children, we have to use the render tag. And now we can say render. And we can just invoke this function because this is just a regular function. Cool. So now we can save this, but of course nothing happened because we have to use this, right? So let me go back to our component here. I would need TypeScript. Let me import card. That's it. So right now, let me just take out this markup and we can delete the rest. All right, so now we can use our component. And now we can pass the children and you're going to see it worked, but it looks awful because inside of our card component, right here, we're styling header and footer, but actually we can style it like this, right? So we actually need some way to pass these items in their appropriate slots, right? Or positions in the component. And of course we could do this the naive way. So for example, we can pass a telephone prop and then we can just pass a string here, but this is actually not ideal, right? This is actually really awful but actually we can use snippets to create reusable markup. And what does this actually mean? So what are actually snippets? Well, snippets are a new block in Svelte 5 for creating reusable markup. So actually, let me just start by saying pound sign, and then we can say snippets, boom, now give it the name of the function. This can be banana, whatever you want. We're going to actually name this telephone, or this is a function which can also set props so you can pass in regular arguments like a regular function, right? Which is really beautiful. And now we can just and the snippet. Cool. So now let's actually move this telephone right here. I'm going to create more snippets. So for example, we're going to name this company. Let me just cut this. I'm going to place it here. Let's create another snippet. So we can even create our own children's snippet. We can actually take this. We can put it right here. And then the last one we're going to have is going to be the address inside the footer. And let me just do this. So I'm going to take the footer. And boom, the only thing left to do is pass this as props. And don't worry, in a second it's going to get a lot better if you're thinking that this is tedious. So let me just actually see. We have telephone, company, children, address. So you can say telephone, company, children address boom let me actually close this so now actually we have these beautiful snippets let's go back to our car component so what did we say we have telephone company address right so now where we have our children we can actually create a header here so we can tell svelte where to put these items right so we can again use this render tag we can render the telephone we can render the company let's create a footer here and inside of the footer, again, we're going to use this render tag and we're going to render the address. Boom, let me save everything and you can see how easy peasy lemon squeezy this is, right? And this is actually what snippets are. Even this children prop that you get from Svelte is just a regular snippet. All right, but let me actually show you how you can improve things. 
So here if you go back to our snippets, this is kind of like really tedious to define snippets outside of our component and then pass them as props. Well, actually, if you just put these snippets inside of the component, Svelte is going to turn them into props for you. So you can just remove all of this. Boom. Let me just copy all of this. You're going to save this and you're going to see everything works the same as before. And of course, this is redundant. So for example, we don't have to define this snippet children. We can just save this and you're going to see everything is going to work the same. You can also provide a fallback for snippets. So for example, let's say that these children didn't exist yet. We can go back to our car component and now we can just use a simple if block. We can check if the children prop exists, then we're going to render the children. Otherwise, let's render a paragraph tag. We can say name, let's say, and you can see here our placeholder. And this is how simple it is to supply a fallback. But you might be wondering when you see snippets, is this a replacement for components? And the answer is no, because you can't really export and import snippets. Snippets are mostly useful when you have some reusable markup, when you don't feel like creating an entirely new file just to import it, right? This is where snippets shine the most. And next, we're going to look at more examples of that. All right, so let's look at another fun example at this countdown. Let me just go to countdown. So I'm going to open this and we're going to learn about scoping in snippets, how they can reference themselves and etc. in this example, right? So this was taken straight from the Swell docs, right? So here we have this blast of snippet which just renders this rocket, nothing special. So here we have another snippet countdown. Here we're going to render it. We're going to pass a countdown. So for example, we can pass 20. You're going to see it's going to update. So how does this actually work? Again, this is just a regular function. We can just pass this number right here. Here we have an if block that checks, hey, if n is greater than zero, in that case, we're just going to log n and then we're going to reference countdown itself. Oh, is this a recursion, friends? I've heard that you need a course for this. This is impossible to understand. Have I been fooled this entire time, right? So here we have this render and countdown and we're just going to invoke itself, right? Until the condition is met. And when that condition is met, we're going to render this rocket. So we're ready for blast off, right? And another cool thing is that you can also use the const tag inside of here. So for example, let's say const and we can just assign this a variable x. We can say n minus one and we can just pass it like this. Boom. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy like that, friends. Of course, this is a silly example that just showcases what you can do with snippets and you really don't have to make it this convoluted, right? So this is actually really cool. So for example, imagine that you have some sign-in, right? You have Google, Facebook, and etc. And you have a sign-in button. And then maybe you have another one that is just email. And boom, now you can create three snippets. You can reuse those button in those off signings or the one for the mail alone, right? So this is how you can reference snippets itself and you can use them to render something. All right, let's look at another fun example. Here I made this breadcrumbs example. So I'm going to go to slash breadcrumbs slash deeply slash nested slash URL just so we have some breadcrumbs. Here you can see we can hover over these breadcrumbs and everything works as expected. But how does this actually work? And it's really simple. I'm going to import this page store from Selkit and stores work with runes, which is really great. So I can define breadcrumbs here. I can use the derived rune. Whenever this store is going to update, we're going to update breadcrumbs. That's basically it. And if you're watching this in the future, this is most likely not going to be a store anymore. So just remove the dollar sign and update the import. And that's basically it. But okay, let's actually talk about the snippet here. So here I'm creating this breadcrumb snippet, which accepts ref and text as the arguments. And then we're just going to render this li. So we're going to do the forward slash, and then we're just going to output the link. All right, so here in this UL list, first I'm going to create this breadcrumb home. We can name this whatever you want, right? So this is going to be our first one, and then we're going to loop over the other breadcrumbs. And you can see this is easy peasy lemon squeezy. So here I'm using const again, just to make this more readable. So I'm saying breadcrumb slice, etc. It's really not important, right? So basically we can again render breadcrumbs based on our list of breadcrumbs. We can just pass in the ref text and that's basically it. This is really how lovely snippets are. And you can see snippets are really awesome for creating some reusable markup. So you don't have to create a new file, some component that you have to import, right? You can just stay inside of this file. All right, so let's actually go for this next example together. Here we're going to refactor this filterable list from the Swell tutorial. So you can search for colors here and it's going to filter them. And the problem with using slots is they're really simple at the start, right? But once you start to get more advanced with them, they can be mind bending. 
So for example, this looks simple enough. Here we have this header, we're passing in this slot header. And here we have this row, which is children, which are going to pass in, right? But if we, for example, want a reference to this row that we're looping over, right? We actually have to bind it here to let. So here we have let item. And how does this actually work if we go to the filterable list? Here you can see here we have our slot header. And here is the slot for the children. So when we're looping over this data and filtering the matches, if we pass in an item to slot, you have to now understand that you can now bind this on the parent, right? Which is actually mind bending. And there are some other mind bending things about slot, like the double dollar sign to check if it exists. Uh, they are impossible to type and other problems with slots, right? So we're actually going to see how awesome snippets are and how they make your life so much easier. All right, so let's refactor this. Well, first we can look at this and we can in fact leave header as children if we want, or you can be actually explicit. So let's create a snippet from this. So we're going to create a snippet header. We can remove the slot props since we're not using slots anymore. That's it. And now we can also do this for the row. So you can actually say snippet row. And we're also going to accept the row, right? So you can see how already this is so much easier to reason about because it's so obvious when you read the code what's going on, right? So you can actually save this. And now it's complaining because row is already defined. So you can just yeet this. Again, no mind bending things to think about, right? So let me actually go to filterable list. So now we have to convert this to swell5, of course, props. We can say data field like that. We can remove this. And of course, if you remember, we have header and row. Boom, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's just create state here. You can already see derived state super easy. We can just say dollar sign derived. That's it. Nothing special. We don't even have to make this derived because regex in this example is going to be a signal. So this is going to update. But of course, if you want, you can actually do something like this. You can say const matches, and then you can say derived. Let's create this function. And you can even save on code here, data filter. You can just put it here. So you can just say data filter. Boom, let's pass in this function. And of course, if you want to pass a callback and make this more readable, you can say derived by, and then you can pass this inside of a function and do more things inside. But actually, we don't have to do anything cool. You're going to see even if I remove this, so now we have matches. Now we can actually remove it here. Cool. So now let's actually go here. We're going to use the render tag. Let's render the header. And look how easy peasy lemon squeezy this is, friends. So we can just say render. We can render the row. We can pass the item. Boom. That's it. We're basically done. So now you can see when we search for a color, it filters the list properly. But yeah, this is why snippets are so awesome. It's so much clearer, expressive, and more powerful than slots, right? So you can really go to town using this. You can do whatever you want. Of course, we can turn this into children. Maybe this is redundant, but I leave that up to you. So for example, if we remove this header here, let me just save this. Let's go back to filterable list. Now maybe we don't need this anymore. Let's just say children. And we can just say children here. Boom, save this and let's see if everything works. Awesome. How beautiful is this, friends? Oh, and check this out. Extra style points. So we can go here to row, for example, and we can, of course, just destructure these things. So we can say hex name, RGB, HSL. Boom. And now we can just remove row to make this even more readable if you want. Boom. Let's see if this works. How easy peasy lemon squeezy is this, friends? Alright, so in the last part, I actually want to talk about how you can create programmatic snippets and then we're actually going to learn how to type snippets. Alright, so let's see how we can create snippets programmatically. And here I have this simple canvas example. I can just zoom out. Now let's actually first read the docs. So let's see, creating snippets programmatically. Let's go here to this example. So basically, there is this API create raw snippet, which is a more advanced API designed for people building frameworks and library. So basically, this is for your storybooks or whatever, so they can more easily integrate with Svelte. This isn't something that you have to think about if you're just a regular person using Svelte. So basically, here's how it works. So you can use this API create raw snippet, you can even pass in whatever you want. So here I'm passing width, height, and we can even pass in a signal here. So let me actually show you something cool. So here we define this, right? So you can specify the render function, so you can render some markup, whatever you want, right? Then you have this setup where you get a reference to that element. As you can see, in this example, I'm setting the width and height, whatever you pass in here is going to be a function. So you have to invoke this, right? So I'm going to get 
this context from the canvas and then I'm just going to draw this circle, right? That's basically it. Here I'm going to define a signal radius and I'm going to just put an event listener on the window on mouse wheel to change it if you're scrolling up or down. So you can see I'm scrolling up and down and I can even change it and this looks very similar kind of to the Japanese flag, right? And you can see here we can say render canvas, we can specify our props including the radius. Let me actually show you if I open the developer tools that we actually get this here so I can actually console log radius. You're going to see we're going to actually get this signal, the raw signal right here. So we get this and that's why we have to invoke this. The same is true for with height. Okay, so you're going to see all of these things are functions, so we have to invoke them, right? But basically, that is why create raw snippet is. I really don't want to spend a lot of time on it since this is a more advanced API, but just in case you might need it, you like this, have an idea to do something with this, right? Go ahead, have fun. All right, so let's learn how we can type snippets. So here I'm going to go here to this types example, and I just have a list of fruits here, which I took from the swell dog. So here I have fruits, quantity, price, and the total. And here we have a list of fruits. We're just passing them to this table component, and then we're passing these children here and our row snippets. That's basically it, nothing special. So let's actually go to the table component and everything looks right. So we're passing data, children, row, and we're just rendering them using the render tag. So everything looks great until the Fire Nation attacks. So we can actually specify that we're using TypeScript, right? And we're going to immediately start noticing some problems here. So if you look at children, this expression is not callable because we actually have to type this. And we can actually consult the swell docs. They have this great section here on typing snippets. All right, so we can actually create a type here. Let me just name these props. You can use an interface, whatever. And I'm just going to assign it here to props. That's basically it. All right, so first we can actually say the data is an array of any because we don't know what it is. You can also use unknown, whatever, right? All right, so how can we actually type this snippet? So children, we can start typing snippet and we can import this type snippet from Svelte. And we can actually also type a row. So we can use snippet. This is going to be array of any's. All right, and that's okay, but we can actually do a better job. We can actually pass a generic. So we can do this by saying generics. We can pass T here. So now instead of this being array of any, we can just pass in T. Instead of any here, we can also pass in T. And now we're going to see when we go here to our temples, it's now Svelte natively supports TypeScript. We can actually see that this is properly typed. So we can see the data is inferred as T array, and we're going to get T. And basically that's it. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.